Have you ever finished a quilt and then had issues with it? Today, we're gonna to talk about some ways to prevent those problems as well as some solutions after the fact. Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. I'm Christina Whitney and Kim Sandberg. And we're gonna be talking about issues with our quilts because they happen. Yes, they We'll do. be real, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna talk about three different things. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about tears in the quilts. Right. Bleeding in the quilt. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and bad tension. Uh, all the things, scary things. The scary things that happen yeah. after the fact of quilting. Not usually, well, the tension can happen while you're quilting, but sometimes you don't realize till after, after you're quilting. Yes. So. Okay, so let's talk about tears in the quilt. Yes, tears in the quilt. It happens. It does. They wear out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the fabric's not the best quality. Sometimes yes. the piecing's not the best. Sometimes so. pets get involved. Yes. <laughs> Life happens. So we've got an example here. Mm -hmm. This quilt was, um, it's actually my wedding quilt for my grandma. Aww. So I can't part with it, but if you take a look here, oh. it is shredding. Yes. You can see like all of these pieces. Different and, qualities of fabric. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I have not quite decided what I'm gonna do, but I do wanna repair it because it does have sentimental value. Right. So one thing that I was thinking about doing is maybe piecing together using kind of similar fabrics, mm -hmm. this whole section, mm -hmm. and then appliquing it over the top. Oh, you could do that. The question is how many places on the quilt because... It's pretty much the whole quilt. It's everywhere. There'd be a lot. Do you still so, have some, <laughs> some similar fabrics that you could do it with? I do have some of my grandma's fabrics still. Okay. Um, so then I'm also at the point where is it worth it? Right. With how much of the quilt is in shreds? Right. Or do I just keep it and let that be a memory? Exactly. So haven't quite decided on that one. Yeah. But let me pull out this other one here. You've got another <clears throat> one. Yeah, this one where the damage is more extensive. There's definitely some issues. This one you've already done repairs on, right? This one I have already done repairs on. So this is another one that my grandma made. And it was just kind of the original crazy scrappy. I love it. This was my inspiration. Um, but when she did it, she didn't overlap the pieces a ton okay. and get a lot of good stitching to hold it in place. Okay. So a lot of the seams were popping open. Okay. And this was one of the quilts that my kids always use. So it was definitely falling apart. Now, just so people understand, this isn't actually like traditionally pieced. This is um, put down and then stitched down on top of the batting and the backing, right? No, this, this particular one, the top was crazy pieced together. Okay, it was and traditionally then pieced. It and was then, traditionally pieced. Okay, and then it yeah. was stitched on top of, okay. Yes. Okay, just wanna make yeah. sure. Um, so what I did was I just found some fabric that kind of blended, mm -hmm. took some patches, and patched over top of ah. some of the holes. So you can see some of these pieces here okay. are patches. Now, with this one, I couldn't, you know, take the top apart, sew it back on. Yes. I wasn't about to do it by hand. <laughs> oh, heaven forbid. So this one I put on my long arm. Okay. And I'm gonna flip it over. Oh. And you can see uh. where I stitched down those extra pieces. And I like to use that little uh, circle scribble stitch around the outside to really secure those patches mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Very nice. Did you use any kind of a, um, a stabilizer or a fusible on the back of the fabric you put down? For this one, I did not. Okay. But that leads us right into it. An idea. <laughs> Bone ash. <laughs> this is great stuff. I have had to use this several times. It's just like a little powder. Uh -huh. And just recently on my Alaska quilt, uh, uh -huh. I found a seam that had popped open. Yeah. And of course it was after it was already on the long arm, yeah. already stitching, what do you do? Right. So I took some of this, the little powder, stuck it underneath mm. where the seam was open mm -hmm. and then iron it down. Okay. And that holds it in place. And then of course I went back and I stitched over it a little bit also. Right. Um, but yeah, that's a great product for fixing holes. 
exactly. And the instructions are included mm -hmm. um, when you purchase it on how to use it correctly. Yes. But it does. It's it's like magic powder that like solves, uh -huh. especially for like smaller holes. It just solves the problem. Yeah. But there is the interfacing also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you've got this great yeah. idea here. So this was one I learned from uh, Amy Domkey, a friend of ours. Um, so this is just some tool. You guys can see that. And what she's actually done more on a quilt like this one right here, where you want to preserve the original fabric. What you can do is you can lay that tool down and you can see how it just disappears mm -hmm. on the fabric. And then you do more quilting over the top of this. Um, I know that I did a, a previous video with her um, talking about vintage quilts and she actually had a quilt where she bought this as in like yardage and she just put it over the top of an entire quilt top did an edge to edge over the top of it and it just locked all those fabrics that she wanted to preserve in place. It holds the batting in. It's a way to do it. You could use this for small spots or large spots either way. And that helps preserve from future damage. Exactly. Ah, exactly. Exactly. And speaking of Amy. Yes. So Amy had a customer quilt mm -hmm. and oh, such a sad story. Yes. It was a beautiful quilt. Yes. And um, sent it home to its mom. Yeah. I think she, that's what she even called it. Yep. <laughs> the dog got to it. Oh, uh, right in the middle too. Yeah. And it took a, a chunk out of it. Gorgeous quilt. As a matter of fact, we've got a picture here mm -hmm. of yeah. the. I think we have a picture of the before. Yep. So let's share those pictures and let's also show what Amy did to repair this because she's a genius. Amazing. <laughs> it is amazing what she did. She created this applique. And I love how she made the butterfly to go on the flower. Like it looks like it was actually part of the original mm -hmm. quilt, doesn't it's it? Very creative. And then so creative on the back. I love the back. A new little label. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. With a nice little thank you from the doggy. <laughs> <laughs> a little reminder of the history of yes. the quilt, right? Yep. So those are some ways that you can deal with tears. There's yeah. tons and tons of ways out there. So what we're going to do is because since I haven't decided what to do with this one, I'm going to ask our viewers if mm -hmm. you will type in your suggestions of what to do with torn quilts. Yeah. Because, again, it happens. Yeah. And we know so. there's some really creative, great solutions out there. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear what you've done. Yep. Or so what typing. What you're thinking about doing. Yep. yep. Okay. So let's move on. Yes. Do -do -do -do. So the next scary dilemma that you can run into with after the fact, and I think this has happened to all of us, don't you? <laughs> this happened yeah. to me definitely more than once. Um, so you got your quilt finished, it's done, you throw it in the wash and you have a big uh-oh happen. In other words, the fabrics bleed because <laughs> for whatever reason you didn't um, you didn't pre-wash it, or maybe you did pre-wash it, but it's just fabric that has a ton of extra dye in it. There's a lot of different reasons. Um, this is a quilt, uh, the, this is Sarah Watts quilt, right? Correct. Sarah, Sarah, we work with Sarah. She's the um, vice president of product development here. And I don't remember exactly what she told us about this one, but she's, I think she washed it and then it got folded or something. She got uh, some bleeding because it was still damp. And she's trying to figure out what she's going to do to solve the problem. So what are some possible solutions for this? I don't know. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> I think we have more tips on this one that are actually preventative, right? Yes. So actually, okay, so this was um, a quilt that was done with a group of people. Oh, that's right. And that's so right. she didn't know what fabrics were put mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. So when it, it bled. And a similar thing happened with this one. I've got all my grandma quilts for the problem day. <laughs> Sorry, grandma. It's type Oops. of fabric, right? Yep. Okay. So this quilt, I was so excited. I threw the whole thing in the oh. wash and this orange bled through. Yeah, you can see it really right there around the edges, huh? Yep, and it even went yeah. through to the back oh, and there was wow. a couple other sections. But I was so excited that it was done, I just threw it in the dryer and I dried it. You didn't check. Before I realized. And Ooh. Yeah. We've all done it. We have so, all done it. Yes. So I don't know wh what or if we can fix these two quilts after they've already been washed and dried. Yeah. Um, so there is one thing called Save My Bleeding Heart. Yeah. Bleeding quilt? Oh, yes. <laughs> my heart is bleeding, actually, <laughs> right after this I one. I know. When one of your precious <laughs> quilts bleeds all over yes. the place. So this yeah. is a this is an article a blog on online right yes and you can just Google save my bleeding quilt yeah 
and she talks about some different steps that you can take. Um, I've also had this happen with a customer quilt. Oh, so oh, shutter. Yes. Like while you had it? Yes. So oh you know gosh. how you use your water soluble pen oh, and yeah, yeah. do your marking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I did that and then I used my spritz bottle to spritz that off. One fabric bled all over. Just it. spraying, the simple spraying it. Oh my yes. word. Yes, I was devastated. I was so worried, but luckily best customer in the world and she was so nice. She took it home. Um, I, I think she might have even read the Save My Bleeding Quilt because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but the one thing that she found and I found on subs or other quilts is Dawn detergent. Yeah. The blue Dawn liquid detergent. Basic. Mm -hmm. And th that's what they talk about in the article. Yeah. Um, so that helps, you know, after the fact if mm -hmm. you find it. Once it's dried, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, if it's been set. Write in set. again, type yeah. in, tell us what you've experienced and what you found works. Um, so I think for this particular dilemma, let's talk about some ways that we can prevent our breaking heart. Exactly. Exactly. Or bleeding heart. We don't or wanna, whatever we want to call it. We don't want to have that super sick feeling <laughs> where your stomach just drops and you're like, oh my gosh, look at what just happened to my quilt. Because it, it is mm. it is like terrifying. You're like, oh yeah. my gosh, what just happened? So I know for me, the number one thing I always do, and we've actually got some over here, I wash all of my quilts with the Shout Color Catchers. Um, I always throw a couple of these in anytime. I feel like I'm doing a little ad for them. <laughs> this is not a paid endorsement. I just want everybody to know, but anytime I wash a quilt, even if it's a quilt that's been washed many times, I always throw at least one of these in. If it's a brand new quilt, I'll throw in two or three. Yeah. But, and my other thing is I, unless it's a quilt that's gonna be something that I'm gonna use like uh, I, I like to call them couch quilts or like bed quilts, like those utility quilts that you're actually going to use yep. all the time. Um, I don't put my quilts in the dryer. Those ones usually end up in the dryer because, I mean, they get the dog lays on them and <laughs> they get popcorn greasy hands on them and whatever. But other quilts, yeah, I always lay them flat to dry and that way if there ever is any bleeding, it's hopefully a little easier to remove. I've I've done the Dawn detergent a couple times and I have successfully yeah. removed a little bit. But this this is what I usually do. This Is this what you usually use? So when I'm washing the quilt after it's finished, I'll, I use the color catchers. Okay. Unless I get super excited like this one and I forget <laughs> to put it in. in. I was so <laughs> mad at myself. Oh, do you ever have those moments? Yeah. 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 But this is um, another product. It's called Retain. Mm -hmm. And this is fabulous. You're supposed to use it before before you piece your quilt. I mean, you could oh. put the whole quilt top in, but it takes a lot more. Okay. Um, but like if you're pre-washing, mm -hmm. and I despise pre-washing my too. fabric. Me too. Um, but I will test my fabric generally and just make sure that it is water safe. Um, water safe? Water safe. So that it doesn't bleed. <laughs> that totally makes sense. That totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, but if I do find one that is going to bleed, this is what I use, and I will soak that fabric and follow the instructions on the container. Um, wish I'd done it on this one. But again, sometimes you don't know. Mm -hmm. If you get a quilt top from somebody else, yeah. or like a vintage quilt top, or say you're working on a customer quilt, you don't know nope. what fabrics have been used. Nope. So learning from my experience, <laughs> always have your customers, if you're quilting for customers, approve using any water and maybe even sign a waiver that they know <laughs> that if it bleeds it's their fault because so. they did it they didn't test their fabric yeah and speaking of testing fabric so i know that some people are like okay what do you mean by testing fabric mm -hmm. it means just taking a little square of the fabric and putting it in some water letting it sit i mean i usually put it in like a warm water just even a mug or a cup i do sometimes use i have some like old-fashioned um uh, wash tubs that I will use, I actually have. Yeah, you've got those. Here. I've got I've got one here, so I've got <laughs> something like this. You guys have probably seen these. I'll just put a couple, some of the fabric in here, and put um, hot water in here, and just let them sit. You don't have to put a lot of water. Just let them sit for I don't know five to ten minutes. If they're going to bleed, sometimes it's almost instantaneous. Yeah. You dip it in there, and it's like instantly you start seeing that. And when you see that, you know, okay, <laughs> hopefully you haven't cut all your pieces out yet, because you should really pre-wash that one. So, um, yeah, that's that's how you test. And then it, the other thing is, I know that I've had people say that if you have a fabric that really bleeds when you're testing it, um, go ahead, pre-wash it, 
put it in the dryer and then iron it again too. I think especially like with the retain because that heat locks in the dye so hopefully it really doesn't release yeah. more. Um, one other tip when you're testing, make mm -hmm. sure you don't use a colored container. Correct. The white ones like that. <laughs> white or clear so you can actually see the water color change. Exactly. So. Yep. Um, any other tips that you have on testing fabric, pre-washing? I know I've heard of, and this is probably in the Save My Bleeding quilt, like actually soaking an entire quilt mm -hmm. in a tub of really hot water. Yeah. You don't agitate it, letting the water drain. Like that's the best way to treat, I believe. I don't know. I haven't yeah. ever actually done the entire quilt. I've only done spots. So maybe we need to maybe we need to do some experimenting. I, I actually did experiment on this one. This one has been in the tub with the Dawn oh. um, after it had been dried. And I, I will say it does look a lot better than it did when I first pulled it out of the dryer. So the, there has been some improvement. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that it's under the water. Mm -hmm so that the dye can come up to the surface into the dawn, like it clings to the dawn, some kind of chemical thing, I don't know. I'm not a chemist. Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, you want the, the quilt to stay underneath that layer so that the, the dyes can Raise. move away. So. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. So what we've got here, um, I don't know how many of you have run into this. You're quilting, you're doing really <laughs> good. You forget to, uh, check your tension on the back of your quilt as you're advancing. I'm sure none of you have ever done this. I'm probably the only quilter. Well, maybe Christina too. Maybe we're the only quilters on the face of the earth that have done this. So the number one thing I recommend is, you know, you always check your tension before you start test, before you start quilting, before you start testing. Test your tension first. Then every time you advance, take, just take a quick second and look as you've advanced it and it's been rolled up onto that take up pole, you can see if there's any issues because mm -hmm. it's most easy to take care of it right then. If you're like me and you've just gotten in the, the groove and you forget about it, you might end up with a quilt that has something like this here. <laughs> you guys can see that there's some real tension issues here. Look at that top thread popping through. And this quilt, um, I will actually admit to everybody that I did not go back and fix it in all the places. There were some places I ripped it out and redid it. But um, there's been a few places I haven't. This is one of what I like to call my couch quilts. Um, it's been washed and used and I just really haven't cared. But if you really care, the important <laughs> thing is, if it's a quilt that the tension being really good is important, it's something like this where it's a more solid back where it's gonna show because the other trick to hide those little tension boo-boos is to use a very busy back. There we go. Busy there we print. go. That busy print is always a really good idea. So what you want to do is you you just need to unpick it. And luckily, stuff like this unpicks really, really easy. Yeah. So um, I've got a little tip for you guys to show you on how to unpick. And I'm just going to unpick a little section. I was going to find a section right here that is really one of the places that's really bad. Okay, so let me let me take this right here. So I'm just gonna unpick right along here. Normally I would be doing this on the frame. Sometimes you have to do it after the fact. And we're gonna show you how to actually put this back onto the frame mm -hmm. so you can fix it. Not this exact quilt, but just the, the method to do it. So what you wanna do is just go in and I'll go in and break one stitch and then I'll pick a few out. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to put my glasses on. I brought them in here because I can't see. Oh my gosh, I'm, so I'm proud turning. Of you for bringing your glasses. I know. Well, I knew I wouldn't be able to see if I didn't do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unpick a few stitches. And I think it's so funny that we call it unpicking because we're actually picking out the stitch, right? But we call it unpicking. Then a really easy way to do this quickly is you lift up the thread like this. And then you can just catch that bobbin thread right there and then you can pull a little bit on it and go to the next one. And this is a lot easier than um, ripping out each individual stitch. It's a little bit easier to do when the quilt's on the frame and you've got a little tension on it. But that's how I like to unpick when I'm on the frame. And of course it's not, it's not being nice right now. Usually when you've got a tension issue on the back, it's really easy to unpick because the threads aren't pulled nice and tight. I always say the worse the tension is, the better it is for unpicking. It's true, <laughs> it's true. Especially if like, you, so you guys can see on this one, what actually was happening with my tension was, 
um, the tension, the top thread was popping out of the tension disc for a little bit and then it would go back. That's why there were like spots of it and then spots of it are gone. So see if I, if I grab that bobbin thread right there and cut it and then I pull up again, grab the bobbin thread there and pull, you can see how that's actually pretty easy. And then you can just pull those little threads out and then load it back on your frame and restitch it. So that's a way to deal with it. What yeah. do you do if you run into tension issues? Well, if I run into tension issues while it's still on the frame and I yeah. catch it in time, um, I'm, I'm really bad. I shouldn't even be saying this, <laughs> admitting it. Um, I do not enjoy unpicking on the frame. Mm -mm. To me, that is misery. I agree. So I'll just stitch the design over, and then when I'm done, I take it off the frame, and then I'll go unpick the bad stuff. Unpick. You know what, I've actually, I, I have done that before, and what I'll actually do is instead of necessarily picking out all those uh -huh. bad stitches, like using the seam ripper, what I will do is I will come in and I will just grab, like especially if it's these big loops on the back, snip, I'll snip, just snip. snip those with a little pair of scissors and remove them, and then you can actually take like a lint roller across the top of the fabric, and it will pull up all the little loose threads. So yeah, I, I often do that. Well, yeah, when I have <laughs> when I have tension issues, which yeah, it yeah. does happen. It does happen. Um, that is a great yeah. way to do it. If I do notice it after the fact, though, after I've completed the quilt, um, I'll do what we're going to show here, where I unpick it mm -hmm. and then put it back on the frame and then stitch back in that area. Yeah. Um, if you're using the Pro Stitcher, you'll have to, you know, hopefully you save the design, because we yes. always say save the design before yep. you stitch it out. Um, so you know the exact size, and then you can reposition it and yep. stitch that one little section. Um, so there are ways to fix it. Yeah. But let's show them real quick how we yep. reload this on the frame using our Easy Grass Clamp, our Super Clamps, um, and they're different sizes depending on what kind of frame you have. Exactly. Okay, so. Kim, we're here at the frame. Yep. We've got your quilt. Yeah. Show us how you load it. Okay, so the first thing to remember is when you're doing this in standard view, you guys can see I've got the quilt draped over the two front poles. You need to remember to put this quilt between the two poles, okay? It's gotta be underneath the pole that would actually hold your quilt top. Otherwise, it's not going to be flat and level going back to the idle pole which means you might run into tension issues again. Yeah. So you wanna make sure you do this. Okay, Christina, you wanna help me out here? You can grab this other end. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our super clamps here and be sure to take it back underneath the idle pole and the take up pole. And then we're just gonna line up along the edges there so we're pretty much straight across. And then we can just pop those clamps right onto there. And Depending on, if you know you need to roll it, the super clamps are really great to mm -hmm. use because they make it easy to roll a little bit, which we'll roll that just a little bit. Okay, and then coming back here to the, what is the backing bar, the backing pole, what you wanna do is just make that nice and tight across there. And then we can use either super clamps again or the easy grass clamps. Now the thing to remember is you put them on straight up like this and then you turn them and make sure that you don't turn them. Do you want to hit the ratchet stuff on that other end? Uh, put them all on before you turn because if you turn one and then try to do more, <laughs> you run into a problem. Otherwise, you have to pop them on at that angle. But then at this point, so I'll pop that last one on over here. I can go ahead and I could bring my machine over here. I could line up, set up an area, do some restitching mm -hmm. if I'm using my pro stitcher, if I'm doing free motion. Once again, just line it up, do what I need to do. Don't be afraid to get some marking tools out to mark exactly where you need to do that fix. But it's, it's pretty simple, simple as that. Yep, a couple tips. Mm -hmm. um, if your tension issue or the area that you need to restitch is right next to the binding, you're not gonna be able to load it this direction, but you can turn your quilt the opposite direction Absolutely. so that it's on the side now. Yep. Um, also with the super clamps, these are fantastic. Some people have a hard time getting them on, especially when they're brand new and they yeah. haven't been. They're tight. It's like buying new jeans or getting jeans out of the dryer <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> but after a while they're like, oh, it's sagging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, okay, I digress. <laughs> but if you take your super clamp and pull it open, uh -huh. putting that end down, and then push your way down. 
it help goes them. on a little bit easier. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And you guys will notice we did leave the leaders on here. It's actually easier to get the quilt to stay in place if you have the leaders underneath your quilt top because then there's fabric that it's not so that it doesn't just slide around the pole. Exactly. Because trust me, you may think, oh, I'm going to take the leaders off. It'll help. Uh, you might just end up with a spinning quilt. Yeah. <laughs> How do we know? Yeah, because we've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So those are great tips. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, sharing those with us. Yeah, happy to do it. Okay, so Christina, that made it super easy to like just pop it back on there with the clamps. Um, on the flip side of that, there has been times where it's just been a very small area and like this one here where it's circles, I would definitely put it back on and let Pro Stitcher make those circles again. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if it's just a straight line or just like a gently curving line, I'll even just do it on my home sewing machine, especially if it's a mm -hmm. small, if it's a really small area, I'll just really quickly do that. Yeah. Just depends on how much restitching needs to happen, right? Yes. And I had another thought just pop into my yeah. head since you were talking about using your home machine. Um, sometimes with couching, mm. afterwards you'll notice that you've got a little toe catcher where the yarn didn't yes. catch all the way. Yep. I will take that to my domestic mm. machine if it's just a small area and just kind of stitch that yarn down just to hold it in place. That's a good so. way to do it. Easy, easy, quick fix, especially if it's just a small amount. Here, we won't flip that over so everybody's <laughs> looking at my attention. We'll leave, we'll leave the quilt there looking cute. Yep. So. Okay, so we've admitted to all of you that we screw <laughs> up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're human. Real world quilting. Yes. Uh, but we also wanted to share ways that we help fix those problems afterwards. And so hopefully you guys have also shared some of your ideas because we learn from you as well. Um, but we want to make sure that you're enjoying your quilting process and make sure that you stay tuned for some of our Instagram pictures and make sure you like and subscribe and have fun quilting. <laughs>